What did I teach you? Uh, you, you are the Duke of New, New York. You're uh, a number one. I can't hear you. But this is actually a good to express something as well. Um, you could get this book if you want. It's by Harry Haywood. He was basically a brother who grew up in the 60s or whatever, and he joined up with the leftist communists. And then he wrote this book basically called Black Bolshevik. What people don't know, though, is that he was actually down with the KGB. He was a KGB agent. And what they wanted to do was turn the basically turn the, the black community into a communist community. And they were actually successful because if you really look at how the black community operates, it operates from the perspective of a communist uh, sentiment. Am I breaking up? Okay. I hope that's better. Anyway, this guy, Harry Haywood, um, the reason why it kind of bears relevance to what we're saying is because uh, Haywood and then, let's say, the communists, they fall under the moon or the lunar aspect of this as well. Even though they, and you can tell that because in their, uh, the stars that they have in their flag is yellow. Right? Yellow stars are synonymous to stars that are reflecting, reflecting, excuse me, refracting the light of the moon. White stars are usually those stars that are reflecting the light of the sun. You know, so uh, I put this here to kind of show you how lunar agendas kind of trickle down into things like material concepts like communism, you know, Bolshevikism, you know. Essentially, after, when the civil rights movement started, right, a lot of the people who are down with that in the black community, we come from, let's say, a more, of, you know, it takes a, a village to raise a child type of mentality, right? So that mentality was basically conducive to being infiltrated and co-opted because, can anybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? I can hear you. Okay, and just says she can hear Okay. Um, okay, good. Essentially, what began to happen was the KGB the, or the Russian intelligence decided that this was the perfect time for them to kind of uh, work at destabilizing the United States from within. So around the time that they hooked up Chase with all of them bombs around the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis, right, that's when they sent people like Harry Haywood, people like Frank Marshall Davis, you know, um, into the hood to deal with a lot of the black intellectuals, a lot of the black artists who were successful and had enough money that they then could use their talents as a means to kind of put further their own political agenda. So being that, the I, see, the layman term of communism, the layman understanding of communism is, you know, everybody work together. The workers are the ones who have the control, and then through that we move up through the ranks and everybody come up together. Uh, that's, the, that's the westernized, marketed version of what communism is. Communism is basically just like capitalism. You know what I'm saying? The only difference is it's fewer people at the top controlling it controlling it all. But how they market it is that capitalism is a great beast because the god of the capitalist is money. Whereas the god of the communist is no god. They're all atheists. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You know, actually they're saying this, but they front like they're atheists. So they're both basically the same, you know what I mean? So essentially what they decided to do was use these black intellectuals to go there and go to these places and speak to these black people and start taking away the, the, the deep, let's say, uh, aboriginal concept of community and working together and then turning that on its head to fit this new world agenda, whereas us against them, you know what I mean, is not enough for everybody. So we all got to work together to make sure we get what we need to get, and then those people who are fighting against us don't get nothing. So that's essentially how they kind of mimic and brought it into the black community. And then once they did that and were able to get in, 
this is when a lot of the welfare system in the black community started. Like a lot of the stuff like uh, the uh, welfare, food stamp, all that type of stuff. A lot of that stuff started, one, to combat what the Panthers was basically setting up in terms of the, the, the school programs and stuff like that, the, the uh, breakfast programs and stuff, but also to create a system in which the people are used to the state doing things for them. Because the state represents, state is another name for prince in law, right? So that means anytime you say the state is, is this or the state of that, you're really saying the prince of this or the prince of that, okay? Because the state is really a principality of the main power. The main power that we are all functioning <coughs> under, really, is material existence itself. Yet the people who facilitate the material existence are those people who are bound to do the things that they do in the dark. We know that the dark is reminiscent of lunar energy, right? Which means that, again, we're going into cosmos or dark energy, which means we're getting into dark matter, which means we're getting into the synthesis of both, which is uh, the entire the entire aspect of what we today call resistance. You know what I'm saying? Uh, excuse me, existence. So, uh, a more agree. Okay, for instance, this is a picture, a caricature picture. Okay, an example of communism in the black community is things like informing on each other, snitching. At one time in the black community, that was a no-no. Nobody did that. Everybody held down their own thing. But see, one of the aspects of communism is that to maintain the state, you need workers who work specifically for the state. The way that those workers get uh, bumped up is by how many people they turn in. Snitching is a big part of communism because that's how the KGB was able to lock down most of Russia at a time when Russia really didn't have as much as they was fronting like they had. They basically got the people to snitch on each other. Another aspect of communism or, or the implication of communism in the black community is the whole concept of there not being enough for everybody. You understand? Like at one time when we was growing up, those of us that remember growing up in America or whatever, you know that there was a time in which when you would play with your friends and everything, and let's say one of y'all got some candy, it was a typical thing that everybody, that if one person had candy, you would share it with everybody else that was down with you. You know what I mean? Um, those types of things began to change when communism as a front for totalitarianism began to create a, a, a modicum in the mind state of the family, specifically the black family, that we need to mind our own business. We need to do what we need to do to maintain our own life. Um, don't worry about what this one is doing so long as it's not affecting you. See, capitalism, for, for its flaws, says the opposite. Because in, capital, in a capitalist society, you need other people to get your product to make something happen. You know what I mean? Another true, another aspect of, of, of communism in the hood or communism uh, infiltrating the minds of black people are those black people who feel like they need to become part of the state in order to make something happen. Like I said, in capitalism, you got to kind of appease other people to get your thing popping if that's what you want to do because you need them to support in, form, in terms of financial dollars. In a communist state, you join the state so that way you get perks. See what I'm saying? So those of us who decided, okay, we're going to join the police. Reverse everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, doing that down south rope and crank down rock. Down south rope and crank rock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say what? Get up to the get down. Get that more. Don't put that. Get now. Get now.